Okay, that's a little different video, because, uh, whatever. And if you've been following along with my posts on Instagram and things on YouTube, you know, the last, about year and a half, I've gotten into building combat robots. And you may have seen uh, this little orange thing here, and <laughs> it's now been gutted, uh, titled, or called Untitled Robot Number 2. It was a fairy weight, 3D printed, uh, did okay. I, I I survived the two fights that I took it to. Didn't win, but had fun, learned a lot. And while testing it, after t making some changes, uh, what was it, yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. I thought, for a moment, I thought it was Friday. I'm like, no, it wasn't Friday, it was yesterday. Uh, I ended up ripping the weapon motor out. Like the weapon motor pulled the, there's four screws uh, up here that hold it in place. Those four, four screws pulled through the body. This bar and the motor went in one direction. The robot went in a different direction. It snapped all the wires right at the motor and broke part of the, the frame, uh, not there, but over here somewhere. And I just was like, you know what? Oh, and it brought, broke one of the motor mounts inside. Right, right there, I don't know how well you can see that. Anyways, I thought, well, I can, I have spare bodies. I don't have another one of these motors. This is the second time I've had a motor, third time I've had a motor fail on me. The first motor, it actually failed. It was an internal failure and I ended up buying a new motor. The second time was at competition. And again, it was an internal failure and I had to fix it between fights. So I kind of said, you know what, let's retire the fairy weight for now. I have all the extra parts. I'll come back to it eventually. Now I have my one pound robot here. This is a finger tech kit, but uh, I've made some modifications to it in that uh, I added the finger tech lifter arm here, but I also uh, went to send cut send and got some sheet metal armor 3D or er, 3D printed uh, laser cut. I think I laser cut that. So that's cool. Uh, again, that is fought and I lost both my fights, but both fights went to the judges. Just like Untitled Robot number two did. That brings me to this here, this piece of foam. Last night while watching Norwalk Havoc, I had the, the, the hairball idea, hairbrand idea of, I want to build a three pound robot, but I'm not good with CNC. But you know what I am good with? I'm good with meat space. I'm good with just taking things together, taking things and gluing them together and making something to see how it would work. That, that clicks better for my brain. So I said to myself, can I, using foam, make a robot? Just as a, just as a prototype. And so I made this just to see if it could be done. I said, okay, cool. Uh, this was too small and problematic. This would probably be a good one pound body, but that was the lead up to, or that was the, the, the can I do that? The lead up to this. Now this is untitled robot number two. V3. <laughs> Still going with the uh, Kerbal Space Program naming of, of, of robots. This will, th th this robot is loosely inspired by robots like um, Scorpios and Sawblaze. Uh, I do have the, the arm there. It is all made out of foam. The only piece of this robot, other than the mechanical bits, that uh, isn't foam there's one piece of wax sand across the bottom right here, just to, to give it some more rigidity. Because I found with uh, this little prototype here, the weight of everything was causing the foam to bow up like this. So it was dragging and the wheels weren't touching. So this just gives a little more rigidity. And again, it's just a proof of concept prototype to see, can I make a, a, a robot, a three pound robot, can I can I prototype something with foam? Where am I going to put my motors? Where am I going to put my batteries? Where am I going to put my electronics? How am I going to make all the, the parts? I could easily have done that in CAD, but just the way my mind works, the way I visualize things, I, I went here with uh, just the foam just to do it. And then I can translate this into CAD, and then I can order the parts from Senka Sen. Now, because it is all foam, I'm not worried about getting hurt because it's just... It's just EVA foam hot glued together. Uh, 
one of the things I did, and this is this was a goof up on my end, I cut this arm here. Let's see if I can turn it off. I cut this arm here, right? And I, I gave it a curve to, to get over this piece here. And then I cut the groove to glue it in to the to the servo right there. But I did it backwards. I put the, I should put the groove on the other side. So the arm doesn't sit at exactly the angle I would want it at. The arm will probably be more curved. And then I'll use a, a saw blade like this with a, a, a probably brushless motor just right here. Kind of keep the center of gravity low. So not make the arm too long, but enough where I can still get in. You know, if this was a, a, you know, a three pounder robot, I was gonna be a little taller. But if this were a three pound robot and I have a pin right here, I could just go, hey, rip them apart. But uh, all the parts that I have on here, the only things that'll change would be the motors and the batteries. I have a Fingertech Tiny ESC to drive everything. And I like those ESCs, they're pretty simple. I have N20 motors right now, but I'll probably upgrade to, uh, Upgrade to like some, some finger tech silver sparks or maybe get some uh, recommendations from somebody else. I found uh, this 20 kilogram uh, DS, D, DS servo. So this big red thing right there. I found that on Amazon last night with like next day shipping. For like 20 bucks. And it's it's got some power. I and mean, this thing... This isn't quite a three pound robot yet, but it's got more than enough power to self right. <laughs> and I did add these little blockers here. I'll probably, you know, when I go to actually translate this into CAD, you know, clean these up and clean all these lines up and everything. Make this film a little thicker, or foam, uh, make this, this front arm a little thicker. And there'll obviously be a top. There's definitely some wire management that needs to be done. But what's kind of nice is this is about the size of my three pound robot that I want to build. I just knocked this out in a day. I started this at about eight o'clock this morning and it's three o'clock this afternoon. And I haven't been working on it now and stop all day. I've taken breaks. I put some parts together, waited for some glue to dry, ate some lunch, did some other stuff, watched some TV, whatever. But I was able to, you know, knock out a, a, a working prototype for the most part in a few hours. I don't want to, I, I have, I have a, a the brushless motor ESC, I just don't have a brushless motor. I do have a regular brushed motor ESC, and I did wire that in, and I had a little tiny motor up here, so I could at least kind of get an idea if it would work or not. I, I was pointing up here at this part, I did have a tiny motor up there. Uh, but I wasn't happy with, with that particular ESC, because it would randomly just short circuit, because it's a piece, it's a shitty ESC, and I'm not going to use them for anything like, like this but what's nice is that you kind of knock this out in a day you know with, with parts i already had i can drive this around my living room and, and get some good driving practice you know just and obviously the the three pound robot's going to handle a little differently especially when we put faster motors in but i can practice those basic driving skills i can also make the joke of oh ma can we get scorpios no we have scorpios at home the Scorpius would have at home. I can also, because it is, you know, untitled robot number two still, I can do this. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. But yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at with this. And I'm, I'm, I like this design. You know, there's obviously some things I need to change. Like I said, these, these wheel blockers, I want to put something here because the, the idea, okay, the, my plan, my strategy, my, my, I'm going to get the, I'm going to somehow win the giant nut with a three pound robot. Don't worry about it. Is to have these kind of angled in to when I do hit somebody to pull them towards the center of my robot so I can drop my saw into them. If I do, you know, get an off angle hit and it doesn't pull them in, I want to be able to deflect them up into this armor plate in a way. And I realized, if that's my strategy, I'm going to lose my wheels really quick. So, probably what I'll do is this, this wedge piece here will come forward more and extend out just a little bit, just enough out from the wheel. I don't, want to, don't necessarily want to do something that goes around the wheel, because I was watching Norwich Havoc, and a lot of things that I saw happen was like, someone would get hit, and then this is pressed up against the wheel. 
I'd rather lose the wheel than have to unbend bend some metal. You know, it's it does a lot of trade-offs. Uh, and, and again, this is just a proof of concept prototype. I wanted to make something and I wanted to see if it was going to work. It kind of works. I'm happy with it. Now it's you know, somebody from the Vegas Combat Robotics community has offered to sit down and, and teach me some cadding. So, you know, sometime this week, I might actually have a CAD file for that. Speaking of Vegas Combat Robotics, there is an event coming up here on April 16th. It's 21 and over event. It's, it's being held at Millennium Phantom Bar. Uh, I won't have my three-pound robot there because I, I don't have time to... It's too late for me to, to build and register one. Yes, I could probably build it in a week or a couple weeks. Uh, but with a lot of other stuff going on, you know, I just don't have time. But I will have my one pound robot there. And I will have this robot there just to kind of, I don't know, it's, kind of, it's just fun to play with. And again, because it's foam, you know, I don't have to worry about being in a test box. If I were to put, even if I were, to, if I were to put a brushless motor on here and put the saw on, even if it was still foam, then I'd be like, okay, now this thing's unsafe. But oh, if you ever, if you ever thinking about building a combat robot? If you ever thinking about building a combat robot? Start with a piece of foam and hot glue. You knock something out. This would not last uh, in a fight. One hit and it's gonna fall apart, and you're gonna chew through it. But at least I can at least have something to practice with and have something a bit bigger than, you know, a one pound robot. Although I haven't weighed this yet. It might still actually only be a pound. And that's going to be it for this one. Catch you guys later.